Dimitri Diliani, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's get right out there and ask the question, why is the Palestinian Christian population shrinking in the Palestinian uh, territories? Well, the answer to this question is pretty much undisputed. It's proven by so many polls. Uh, most recently, uh, Palestinian Christian immigrants with 75% saying that the main reason for their uh, migration is uh, the state of Israel and the military occupation of the state of Israel. Um, now, we can go back in history and discuss how come there are more Palestinian Christian uh, 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 displaced in diaspora uh, than their percentage among the population. In, in, in the mid of past, last century, uh, Palestinian Christians were about 30 percent of the population. Now we are much less, we're less than 2% uh, in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem. And the reason for that, that when the state of Israel was established, it was established on Palestinian territory in 1948, uh, the Western part of the country, which is mainly populated by uh, a large number of Palestinian Christians. For example, West Jerusalem, had a majority of Palestinian Christians than it did more did more than uh, 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 Palestinian Muslims or uh, Palestinian Jews. And believe it or not, we had the Palestinian uh, Jews. So um, in in big cities, a lot of villages like in Karim and others were totally evacuated by the Haganah, by the Israeli. Uh, 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 or the Zionist, there was no Israel then, by the Zionist uh, militias, and later on by the state of Israel, these people were basically forcibly displaced and had to leave the country, just like my family did. My family actually uh, was forcibly displaced from West Jerusalem uh, and went to Beirut, and then they came back to the east side of the city after three, four years, which was later on, uh, occupied, and this is where we're saying a lot of people did not make the return to the east side of the city, while also other cities uh, uh, were not uh, simply uh, uh, available anymore because Israeli army made a mission to destroy like villages like Ikrit and Berem uh, mm -hmm. and, and many other Christian villages. They were just, you know, bulldozed down and there was nothing to return to. In addition that the Israeli law does not allow Palestinian Christians uh, to return to their own homes and to their villages or towns or Israel uh, uh, proper or the occupied Palestinian territories. Now, is, so that a, is that a law for just Palestinian Christians or is that for all Palestinians? That is a law for all non-Jews. See, the state of Israel has two sets of laws. You have laws for Jews, and you have laws for non-Jews. You could be Christian, Muslim, atheist, whatever, Buddhist, whatever you want to be. Then that is you have different set of laws and rules. And uh, the most uh, 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 clear is the law of return, where it mm -hmm. states actually, in, in, in the law, that you have to be a Jew, prove to be a Jew, even though you have never set a foot, neither you, your parents, your grandparents, your grand-grandparents, your blonde hair, blue-eyed, New Yorker with, with a Brooklyn accent, you can always come to the state of Israel where you are welcome. But for my cousins that can prove their own property, in West Jerusalem, my grandfather's house is still up there. I can see it all, every day when I'm going to Bethlehem. Uh, they cannot even come to visit. They are denied a visiting visa. And this is the case of over 7 to 8 million Palestinians living in diaspora, and they cannot return to their homes, while somebody anywhere, you actually can, you can claim to be a Jew, get a certificate from some rabbi somewhere, you can pay a couple of thousand dollars for that, and you are most welcome to come here and live in my grandfather's house. This is how ridiculous it is. And you know what? The United States of America supports this policy. 
So you're saying that before 1947, 1948, there were 30% of the Palestinian population was Christian. And yes. today that population has dwindled down to 2%. But the reason for that dwindling is not because of the Muslim population and a war between Muslims and Christians and the religion, but instead it is the occupation that has driven out all of the Christians because, am I getting this right, that the majority of the Christian villages specifically, where mostly Christians lived, were in the areas that during that partition, the UN partition, that was all what they gave to, to the Jews? Well, no, the state of Israel did not adhere to that. The state of Israel went way above and beyond what was given in the partition. And they, of course, not included in, in anything. They, 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 they just forcibly displaced people. They committed massacres. They raised their, their villages and towns, homes. I mean, it was a huge genocide that we are still living the effect of until today. So it's not as, as, as clear as that. There were many uh, uh, war crimes taking place. But on top of that, many Christians have basically went to the eastern side of, of the country, to the West Bank. And when Israel occupied, and, and it was a thriving community, yes, refugees, but thriving community, owning businesses. But when the state of Israel occupied that part of the uh, country in 1967, basically it kind of uh, duplicated what it did in 1948. And Christians were the most affected and they had to leave. And this is proven by polls. This in, in the Palestinian uh, society, actually asking if somebody is a Christian or Muslim is something that you do, you do not do uh, mm -hmm. because it is, uh, it's disgraceful to, to ask such a question. Two, the majority of the Palestinian revolutionary factions resisting the occupations were founded and headed by Palestinian Christians. So Palestinian Christians were part, integral part of the Palestinian national movement, part of the society. And it's, it, 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 you cannot basically, just like in the United States, you cannot say that there's a difference between a Catholic and Episcopal in terms of belonging to the country or to society. Here, it's the same thing between Muslim, Christian, atheist, and the Jewish community, the Palestinian Jewish community that lives in Nablus today under Israeli oppression as well. They're not in better case than the rest of us. The Sumerians mm -hmm. in Nablus, the, the oldest Jewish community and the only Jewish community that has uh, stayed in, 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 in Palestine historically is identifies as Palestinian, is part of the Palestinian society, is part of the Palestinian uh, security forces, ministries, health, whatever. I mean, they have equal mm -hmm. rights. So we, it, it's, we're not like the state of Israel. It, it doesn't work that way. I, it's, uh, uh, and I'm not saying that for the monotheistic religions only. You can be also an atheist and, 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 and be of equal rights as a Palestinian Christian in opposition of President Mahmoud Abbas and very vocal one at that. I have never, ever in my life faced any discrimination, whether it was on the political level, on a social level or at the professional level because of my religious background. Mm. This has never happened to me. Maybe it could happen to other people. But it's a minor thing that doesn't happen all the time, and it doesn't cause anybody to leave their country and go somewhere else. Um, I found it interesting. I did travel over there to the West Bank with a group of Palestinian Christians who are in the diaspora. They live here in the United States. They're Americans now, um, and and I I it was it was very interesting to me that when I was over there. You're right. I never was aware of who was what uh, religiously. I mean, there were some people that wear their religion, so they make it quite obvious, some of the women. But other than that, there was no way to know, especially with men in particular, whether or not they were Muslim or if they were Christian. A lot of the women, there was no way to know. You'd have to specifically ask what they were in order to determine. There wasn't any sort of, um, I didn't witness myself any sort of discrimination 
or you know anything along those lines. What I also found interesting, and maybe you could kind of ex explain this a little bit, but Ramallah, the city of Ramallah, which is the de facto capital of the Palestinian territories, is a Christian-run city. And I think by decree, the mayor has to be Christian by law. Is that right? Well, you have to go back to the history, how this city was established. This city was established by a Jordanian, actually, around close to 600 years ago. His name was Rashid Haddadin. And he had five sons, and each son uh, has started and founded a clan. And uh, this guy, Rashid al-Haddadin, is a Christian Orthodox. And uh, with time, the, the town has gained that identity of being a Christian town. Even though today, uh, the majority of inhabitants of Ramallah are not Christians uh, for many reasons, but at the end, the, 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 the mayor, uh, by law, has to be a Christian, just like Bethlehem. By law, the mayor has to be Christian. And this is part of the, uh, the, the, the legacy of uh, uh, the late uh, President Yasser Arafat, who made sure that Christians do uh, preserve uh, an element of identity, not only in, in social uh, life, but also in the political spectrum. Hmm. Why do you think there's so many Christian Palestinians in the diaspora? When I meet Palestinians here in the United States, for example, most of them seem to be Christian. Why well, do you think that is? Uh, well, the one reason is that they they come from villages and towns and cities that were occupied in 1948. Two, many of these Christians were brought up in and around churches which gave them second and third languages, gave them good education because many of the churches, actually all churches have schools and, and colleges. So they were uh, educated and they had this connection, uh, the, the, the religious connection to the West. So it was easier mm. for them when they're about, you know, when, 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 when the state of Israel was established, they're being prosecuted, they're being killed, they're being their homes being uh, uh, bulldozed down. They had the way out and they had the connection the, either through the church or by applying for jobs or whatever. Yeah. I know tens of people that uh, basically just uh, took the ship to uh, New York and, and, and didn't know where to go, what to do. And I met some of these people in the United States and they made it. They made it big. Because they were educated, they were uh, um, cultured, uh, they spoke m multiple languages. It kind of helped them. So not only uh, it was Christians, it was that uh, type of Christian that it was easier for him or her to go west. While if you go to the east, for example, most of uh, 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 refugees, Palestinian refugees in diaspora in the east, in Jordan, in Syria... Uh, also in Lebanon, are not uh, uh, Christians. They are mainly Muslims because it was easier for them to go to uh, uh, Muslim predominantly uh, predominant countries in the East. That makes sense. But you would say all of them are fleeing Israeli occupation, not because of some religious war between Christians and Muslims. History doesn't record any uh, war between Christians and Muslims, except for the civil war in Lebanon. It wasn't clear cut either because some half of Christians were actually on the Muslim side uh, in the, what they call the national movement versus the, the, the other Christian uh, side of uh, the story. But history does not record in Palestine any kind of uh, war between Christians and Muslims, any kind of conflict. Uh, on the contrary, the only conflict that uh, we had, we always had together, either it was against the uh, Ottoman uh, Empire as an occupier, mm -hmm. or against the British mandate, or against the Israeli occupation. History records this cohesiveness in resisting occupation. And we are people that have been, you know, from biblical times, we've been living occupation after other. Uh, that's the way uh, things go in Palestine, and hopefully we're going to break that cycle.